Good afternoon, everyone. I hope you're well. Oh, there's my scissors. I couldn't find them. They're on the they're on the floor. Um, oh, I've got two of those. I'm going to put together a base for a journal using envelopes and bags. And we've done this before. I've got two of those as well by accident. Um, but I can't remember exactly how I did it. I found these. I had bought these lovely envelopes. Um, and that's a bag. And then this is just some book paper. This might be too big. I don't want it to be that deep. But I might put that in the pages of the journal. So I'll put that aside. I'm just going to construct some sort of cover. I'm thinking I might have this at the front. So I think I might just carefully trim here. Now, you know me, I fly by the seat of my pants. I never come on the video with a clear plan. That's just never going to happen with me. <laughs> I just know I want to use envelopes and bags. So some are new, of course, and then this is recycled. And I'll cut those bits off. Actually, I can probably tear those bits off carefully. I'm going to collage on there anyway. There we go. So, of course, you could do this all with um, these types of envelopes. Maybe we'll do that one day. And I'm just thinking. Now, I think I might have that there like that. And that might be some sort of flippy thing, I think. Okay, it's coming to me. And so then I might have... Might attach this one. Yes, we'll attach that one. Okay, I'm just going to make it up as I go. So if you want to grab your envelopes and follow along, by all means, pause the video and hop over. I'm trying to find my glue paper. Hop over and get them. Okay, so we're starting a project here. Well, I'm thinking, I'm thinking I might, I'm going to do a couple of uh, draft journals. So I'm thinking one of these will be used for the draft journal, but it may go into a cover after that. So I'm just going to see. Just going to see what happens. I'm going with the flow. I, I, I mean, I enjoy this the most. This is how I enjoy crafting is not having a plan and seeing what happens. See, look at that. I really do enjoy it. But I know for some people it's stressful because some people um, need to have, um, and I've already think I made a boo boo. Some people need to have a plan, but I've already made a boo boo. I'll tell you why. I'm going to take that off. Um, because these need to attach in here as well and I've, so I've done it wrong I'm going to just take that off it's alright, I thought it can be fixed I'm going to glue this one on there I'm going to take that bit off and then I'll put some glue on there because I need to attach my other bits before I attach my outside bit I can't even remember how I do it can't remember just, just, we'll just, you know, just go with it I'm going to put this one here. Blobs of glue everywhere. Now, please forgive me. I'm a bit headachey today. We went to Steph's cousin's last night. And we went to Steph's cousin's last night. And, you know, it's I don't know if it is in other parts of the world. I'm just going to trim this off because I don't want it to be so long. I mean, other parts of the world. But it's I know in Australia it's very fashionable to drink gin tonic. Now, gin tonic, I tell you, I have to tell you a story. You'll think it's terrible. But when I was 18, I went to London with one of my um, school friends. And my mum is English. and But she's lived in Australia since she was like three. But she's English. Um, and so I'm just going to attach this one here. So she, so I went, I went to, my gran was from the northern part of England. And her sister, aunt, great auntie Frida, she lived in Brighton in the southern, southern part of England on the coast. And so, you know, I was only 18. I actually never, never drank or anything like that. I didn't really, I mean, I knew what alcohol was, but I wasn't a drinker. And um, of course, you know, UK is like Australia at 18, you can drink. And so anyway, <laughs> she took us, she took my friend and um, me to this some sort of 
I can't remember. I think, I don't know, some sort of lounge. I don't I can, All I can remember is that, you know, you can imagine that it was sort of like, I don't think it was a club or anything like that, like as in a men's club, or of course not because we were women. But um, she took us to this place and and all I can remember is that I um, we she got me gin tonic and I'd never had a gin tonic before. I don't I didn't drink wine. I didn't drink anything. And um, and it really <laughs> knocked me out. Let's say that. I, pro I don't even know how I might probably had one or two, but I wasn't a drinker. So it went, you know, it got me rip roaring. So I got rip roaring drunk with my great aunt. And um, <laughs> and I can just remember going back to my uncle's apartment because he had an apartment in, in London at the time. And just, you know, I, I don't think I went out the next day. Let's put it that way. And I have never touched gin tonic ever again. And anyway, so it's all the rage now. Everyone's drinking gin tonic, including my older brother. He loves it. Um, and and so, anyway, they they we had dinner at, at Steph's cousin, and she gave us a gin and tonic. And I, I literally, I thought, oh, gosh, you know, how long ago was, was it that I was 20? Um, 18. It was a really long time ago. I can't even do the math. And so I thought, oh, I'm sure that, that you know, that distaste you know, that my body will not reject the gin tonic now or after like over 30 years, like 34 years or something like that. Anyway, <laughs> I drank half and I'm like, oh, it tasted really good. It was really ta yummy. It was yummy. But I was just like, oh, and it wasn't even strong. She didn't, I mean, because Steph's cousin, she doesn't drink. She's not a bit, I mean, she loves wine. She makes, she's a, I don't know what you call it. She's a, she, you know, she studied. Oh my goodness. I'm really being a, a ding dong today. Um, she studied um, winemaking, like she's, it's called an enologo in Italian, but she makes wine. She works for this company, she actually manages the company. So um, anyway, she's not a big drinker. She does like wine, but she doesn't ever exaggerate. And anyway, so she made these, these gin tonics and they weren't even that strong, but I just couldn't cope with it. But anyway, I'm wondering if that's why I've got a headache, even though I didn't even drink it. I only had half. So that was a big long-winded story, wasn't it? So here we go. Look, I've got all these bits in here. I've figured it out. Uh, and I'm wondering, I think I could attach this one here. So that could flip out there. Or, yeah, I think I'll attach that one there. And that will flip out. And I need to see if I can attach one of those. So let me grab some glue here. And I'll glue it down. Yes, I'm a bit headachy, so the brain may not be functioning well. And we had like really heavy rain in the night. We couldn't tell. It was very noisy. And um, we ate pizza. And so I think my body was not happy. And I just didn't sleep well at all. So getting old. Can't cope with the things that I used to cope with when I was younger. Okay, so that's that. And I just like these things to be all interactive and have flippy things everywhere. Now, this has the writing like this. I don't want to cover that there. I could have one here. That could be cool. Two. I could glue it there. Now, that, I wonder what would happen if I... Let's just see here. Sort of fold. See, I can't even fold today. I probably shouldn't have even turned on the video. But I don't like, you know, missing too many days. Put that there. And that would flip like that. I think I'll do that and then I'll try and resolve that issue at afterwards. So I'm just going to put glue on here again. This is a nice way to sort of create a base. And then, you know, like if you have a, you know, a book cover that you might, you might fit into, you can do that. Or you can do a fabric cover or a collage cover could be good okay so that's my base it's done we've got a bit of recycling and a bit of new and then I'll decide I might insert pages I might insert a few pages here and there but I'll probably insert them this is the middle here because that's this this is in the middle see I can see the crease there so this is the middle so probably best if I insert my most of my pages in there but I could certainly go and stitch in something in in between any of these as well if I wanted to Okay, so that's that. Um, we won't use those. 
that came together very quickly. Um, now, we might start decorating it because I do have some pages printed here. I have some printed, but I need to finish tearing, tearing them out. And they're too big, so I'll have to figure out the folding of them as well for, for this, because this is going to be, this is more like a TN style sort of journal. But we can start decorating it. There's no issue with that. And so I'm going to grab, I probably need to print out some more papers because I've got all these things made. Um, but I don't, I don't have many base papers. Right, so let's just see. Look, I've used up so much, but I do have bits and pieces here that are good for this sort of thing. I'm just going to give that a little snippy. And I'm going to go here. And then I'll trim. No, maybe I'll put it that way. I'll keep the lighter part. I'm going to cut that out there and put that there. And then I'll trim it off or wrap it round. Maybe I'll wrap it round. Okay. It's a public holiday here in Italy. It's the um, Befana, which is like the epiphany public holiday yet the kids get the old lady that comes on the broomstick she looks like a bit like a, a an old hag but she comes on the broomstick and she gives um the good good kids get um lollies and gifts they it's more of a thing here um steph was telling me when he was little it was more of a thing here than you know santa was for us um in other countries so um it's all very exciting for the children not for lulu because she's too old for that now um but yes, the kids get very excited. Although Lulu grew up more with the sort of Anglo-Saxon Santa happening. Um, but yeah, so it's a public holiday. And so everybody's at home. And in theory, Lulu goes back to school tomorrow, which is crazy. Like they should have just let them go back to school on Monday. They're going to go back to school for two days because they go to school on Saturday as well, um, which is just silly. And, and actually, there's nothing written on the school website. The news was saying, they were saying that the government had decided school was to go back on Monday. But the regions here, each region like Emilia Romagna, Toscana, they can all decide by themselves what they want. And it appears that our guy here, that um, is the president of our region, has decided that they're going back tomorrow. But the school hasn't put anything on their website. So everyone's sort of a bit confused, really. It's not hard to confuse me, but other people are confused as well. So it's not just me. I'm not alone in my confusion. I was just chatting to my sister today after I watched her video, of course. I loved it. And we were just um, <laughs> saying how, how different, like we're similar but different. Um, I'm a fly by the seat of my pants person. And, and my sister, uh, she said, I just can't do that. She said, I have to have an idea of what's going to happen. Otherwise, it's stressful. You know, she's worried it's going to um, turn out a dog's breakfast. Well, you know, it could happen. But you know what? I just think I don't I enjoy more not being too organized. I enjoy it much more. And um, I'll probably never do a video if I had to sit down and organize myself. And so... I just think, you know, if I don't like the video, what's happening in the video, then I would, I wouldn't post it. I'd just start again, sort of thing. But I have to touch wood. I never had to do that. I've always been, um, it's always sort of come together. But it is risky. It is risky. To, I mean, not. It would be more risky if my videos were live, but they're not live. Um. So, yeah. But it's just funny how. We function differently. My mum said, well, you know, your sister is a teacher too. She does have to be organised. So, um, it's just funny. I don't know. I just do it. Just sort of like, you know, I pull out a few things. I'll pull out a few things. I know, I know kind of in what, what direction, but I don't have a clear 
sort of idea exactly. I'm going to wrap it around, I think, just to be sure. And I need to tear it off. I'll tear off a bit more than what I need. Okay. So this is not actually going to be my cover. This is just going, this is going to go inside a cover. So, um, but it, it does take a little bit of work in the sense that, you know, you've got quite a bit there. Well, not necessarily, the, not the new envelopes, but these sort of recycled envelopes, you need to cover them. I am the biggest, mushiest glue person ever. I just get the biggest blobs. Can't help myself. Um, but um, what was I saying? Oh, you don't have to decorate all the envelopes, but a lot of them, yes, because, the, well, they're recycled. And this bit, obviously, I need to cover. I just need to go up to there. And then here, I don't want to... I, I would need to fold it over here. Let's make sure it comes in, because I, it'll be annoying when I open it. And that bit, I need to... Let's snip that bit off. I mean, it's, by all means, you could make this a cover if you wanted to. And if I snip that off... Oh, it doesn't want to open... See, I probably should have folded these. I'll just squish them down while it was open. And then here, I want to snip here, I think, me thinks. And I'm going to fold that in there. I might snip that off at a corner too because I don't want it to crash into the crease. No crashing in the crease is allowed like that. And that will be covered up when I collage in there. There we go. And what's happening here? Get rid of that. Okay. Good. I don't want to get glue on there. Right. I don't worry about opening my envelopes until after. And then recrease that like that. Okay, so that one's done. It's not quite done. I need to put some more on there, actually. Now, let me see. Somewhere, we don't know where, but somewhere, I have some... Florentine paper, but I don't have much, so let me see if I can find it. Oh dear, I have so little, I can't even find where it might be. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where did I put it? really wanted to use some. Oh, I know. No. Florentine paper so my next best thing is my um, these papers actually these ones I don't these ones not those ones um, these ones these blue ones I don't have them in a kit yet I was going to do a blue a blue kit but some of them are a little bit similar to the grey that's a bit more blue than the grey one but it is a, a bit similar and that was one I didn't, I didn't do. I had a couple that I didn't do because um, they were, I don't know, I just stopped. I'm, be I'm probably better just not to talk at all today. I'm going to have a pop of blue here, like that. Oh, look at that, how that lifts it. That really lifts it, it really does. And then I can decide if I want something there later. I'd like to also get my pages. I won't get them in today but I would like to get them in at some point and then decide what I might like to see there. Wrap that around. And that way you won't see any of the envelope there, which is good. Okay, so that, that's, a happening, that's what's happening there. I need to do something here. So this is a nice piece. I 
think I could attach something like that there and then something else. But what I can I do I have enough? I don't. I can't. I wanted to trim it down a little bit so it was rough edged, but I can't do that. But I could put a little bit of um, a little bit of what's it called? Washi tape. So we're making a really an, like an envelope based journal that I will then decide if or what cover I'm going to put on it. I'm also going to put some, you know, I'll put some recycled vintage papers in there. I'll probably put some straw paper in as pages, but we'll do that together. We'll select all the pages together. We can do that. That's not a problem. That there, and I need a little bit of something. I can carry on with the blue down there, actually, and I can just cut that. I was going to say straight, but that's that's really an extension of the imagination, thinking, saying that that is straight, <laughs> because it's very crooked. My brain went off on a tangent for a minute so I'm going to find a washi tape now and put that there it's nice to pull out the non Christmas washies um, kind of like this one or yeah maybe I've got I mean these are all my blues and greens mostly I just put them there together. I think I would like that one because it will be more subtle. And I won't put it all the way down, just a little bit. Maybe like that, just in that area there. And then here I'm going to have some sort of focal point, but I'm quite liking that page. Problem solving along the way. The washes there, might use them again. Um, I probably would like to use a little bit of my, um, if I can find them, um, some of my um, William Morris. Um, I like all those colours together. Right, what's next? What's next? Right, so we've got that there. I probably have a flower or something happening there. I don't know. We'll, we'll decide. And let's just see here. I'm just trying to combine all of these different um, bits and pieces that I've got left over. I might put some book page down. That's always a good option. Oh, I've got a bit of, um, I might pull that out too. That's a bit of tea dyed paper, I uh, scan tea dyed paper. I don't want that book page. I want a different book page. I keep pulling that. Oh, and I've got these as well. Oh, why don't I use this? I've, I've got lots of that and I never use it. I hoard it. I've got that. I love those. Look at this big thing of things that I can use and I, ne I never pull it out because it's hoardy. Why I hoard these things? I can't tell you the pieces of paper that I have flying around. 1857. That would be nice over there. I think I might put... Let's have a look at this. I always forget to use this. This would be lovely. Maybe here. And then put a little bit of something up there. I think I'm going to glue that on there. This is pattern paper. This is the one that you transfer. And I can just tear it slightly in. This is how I measure. Eyeballing a bit. Just put it on top and tear. And, and then I'm going to just tear across the bottom here so odd that this headache just came on now. Tear across there. I'm going to glue that on. So maybe I better get a clean piece of paper instead of a sticky piece of paper. Chuck that all over 
there. Let's rip the. Oh, it's already ripped off. This will be good. So, how is everyone today? Didn't ask you that. Hope everyone is well and crafting away. And oh my goodness, some of you ladies are fast with your stitching. Like instantly, there are um, images. So that's really cool. Really loving it. Really, really enjoying seeing everything, everyone's work. And I wanted to let you know that. <laughs> Um, I invited Steffi to join the group and my sister's like, oh my gosh, poor man, he's going to see all this stitchery. But you know what? He really appreciates. He really does appreciate what um, what we do. And well, you know, he's a creative person too. He's an architect um, and he really does appreciate what we do. And when we came home last night, he's, um, I can't remember who it was. Helen, was it you, Helen? You put... Um, on Facebook, I think it was, because I got Steffi to join the group. Now, don't freak him out and go and say hello, because that'll freak him out. He's shy. Um, but he is looking, and he's a, really just astounded by the work that he's been seeing. He's been amazed, and he's <laughs> saying to me, oh, my goodness, there's some incredible, incredible, incredible stitchery um, in your group. And I said, I know. Um, you know, I was talking about it with mum too, that, you know, we even mum, mum was just saying how amazing it is to see everyone's incredible interpretation and take on what's happening. And, and then some of the, you ladies that are, tell us you're beginners, I mean, amazing job, amazing. Anyway, Steffi's really enjoying seeing all your work and he's silently, silently appreciating, but please don't go and freak him out and say hello because he will he he, he he wouldn't like that um not in a bad way but he'd be a bit shy so um yeah but he, yeah all right so i'll stop get i'll stop waffling on because my brain is not functioning and um and i'm going to glue that in there i think because that's a nice thing you could write on there i'll put some sort of i will put some sort of feature on there and a bit more collaging You've got waffle, Rachel, today. I'm waffling. Babbling. It's babbling. I'm just babbling about nothing. Just babble, babble, babble. I think I'm going to have it. Go. I don't normally like to go right across the crease, but I need to. But I don't want to go over my window there because otherwise you'll be able to see the white on the other side. So I need to flip it around. It's a fiddly business. Flip it around. But it's fun, and I haven't done this kind of thing for such a long time. Really, it's been months, many months. Um, I've still got to finish off the one that Lulu liked. I thought I'd do the cover with you guys. I'm building up to that. I'll, I'll do the cover with you guys for Lulu's one, if you all remember the one that she claimed. Before anybody else could claim it, she claimed it. Oh, you remember, do you, Billy Big Ears? Oh, well, it's in here. I can pull it out if you like. Oh, she's. did you hear that, guys? She's very comfortable right now, so she'll come and look later. Okay, so we're going to glue this down. So, of course, I won't get it all done in the video because, you know, it's quite a big... Oh, dear, I've got really crooked. Lately, I've been... I normally can really slide my papers along much easier than that. Lately, they've not been sliding the way I like them to. There we go. Just have to peel it up. That's the good thing about glue stick. You can see how sticky it is. It's very sticky stuff. Okay, that's better. And um, scissors. Oh, I'm lo look at that. How pretty is that? I love those colours all together. And I feel like, you know, this is Ode to Jane and, you know, she she was known to do embroidery from what I gather from watching. I've seen a few. There was a, oh, I can't remember what it was called. There was, um, there was like an exhibition somewhere in the UK um, and there was this magazine. I think it was called the Ladies Magazine in the 1700s. I'm sure some, especially um, you people who live in the UK, you might know better than me. But they... Um, there was this magazine called the Ladies Magazine, and they had all of it was for obviously for ladies, and um, and they had all of their stitching 
in there, like, you know, patterns and stuff like that. And, um, but um, I, would, I listened to a podcast on um, Suzanne Weeks. She's an English lady that has podcasts on, they're very, actually quite nice and soothing to listen to, actually, when you're, when you're stitching or creating and things. Um, and she, she, she was interviewing the lady that, um, she, there's that book. I don't have the book. Mum has the book. It's, it's the Jane Austen embroidery book. I don't know what it's called though. I don't know the actual name. I think I'm going to put that there. I don't know the actual name of it, but oh no, I think I put it up there. Does it fit? No, it doesn't cover. Um, oh gosh, yes. The Jane Austen some Jane Austen embroidery book, and in that book, there she, this lady that has quite a lot of those, um, the ladies' magazine from the 1700s with the patterns. She, she got to, she contacted, she put it out there that um, she was. Um, oh, this this is from. I've been um, ripping up books. I put some more hundred piece packs in my shop. They really take. I haven't had them in for a long time. Because they take up, like, I need to have a lot of stuff to put in them to put in the variety. Like, I try to put in, um, you know, sort of old ads and and I've got old, you know, bits and pieces of 1700s. But in pieces, so it's more for collaging. Um, but I have, to, I have, need to have so much to create those packs that they, you know, when I run out, um, I don't have them in for a while again. And they take... Literally, probably took me a, a whole week to put them together. So they take a long time. Um, but I've got this papers in there. It's, it's a bit, um, it's late 1800s, but it's a bit of a shiny paper. Well, not shiny, it's just smooth. It's not, you know, matte paper. But it's a, I like the font on it and I like the colour. So I'm going to put that down. And I actually feel like it goes really well with Jane's. With Jane's. <laughs> with Jaff's. Um, kit. Now, what I was saying, I was got to go back to Suzanne Weeks. I watched, I uh, listened, listened. I listened to, actually, I might like that side more with a little bit of thing there. Um, I listened to her podcast and there, there is a, there was an exhibition in the UK showing, um, you know, showcasing some of the original um, magazine patterns and things. And then there was a stitch off and, and these people, um, had their work displayed, recreating some of the patterns um, from uh, that period of time, and and it, and Jane Austen was known to to do embroider, be, be very good at embroidery, very good. So um, I feel like having a bits and pieces of embroidery in a in an ode to Jane kit is, you know, they weren't these pattern, they were not that pattern either. They were. Things like this, but this is not. This is, I think, this is like for a man's vest. Things like that, patterns like that, um, sort of thing. Uh, I might have even printed these out from her thing. I haven't. I wouldn't put them in a kit or anything, but I just think they're lovely. And anyway, what the lady was saying that's an expert on this ladies' magazine was, you know, in, in those days, that was what they did, didn't they? The the ladies and the young girls, they did samplers and and um and they embroidered so um what she found in the magazine was there was the pattern but there was no um guide there was it wasn't like a, a mag you know like a embroidery magazine today or or like you know someone's pattern that gives you instructions and says use this color and this color and do this stitch over here and that stitch over there they literally didn't have any instructions these um these patterns and they so they just had to know and so she was saying from the experience of the people that um uh, did the did work on the patterns that that was quite hard at times to interpret what was supposed to happen in that spot if you know what i mean so yeah i thought that was i find that really interesting there you go that was a long long bloody blur as well of pointless information and I'm going to put that there. I'm just going to trim it a little bit here because I'm worried it may... I don't want to see it on the other side. I really don't know what I'm doing today. It's really a tough one. But anyway, we'll slowly work on this project until it's done. How about that? 
it's nice to have a project, especially because I'm not doing my Roxy's this year because I need to have a break. I need to free up my mind for other things and, you know, not getting as much done as I'd like to um, get done. So I feel like I've got a bit more. I can do more what I feel like now. And I need to find something to go down here and here. Now, here I would just put maybe a little piece of this. Maybe not. No, maybe I wouldn't. I need to, I'm still, you know, trying to get myself going after Christmas. I still have uh, a lot of, um, I still haven't pulled out all of my, my other, I think I'll put that there, my other papers. I mean, they're just over there, but I sort of don't know what's in my tray anymore. And I need to sort of just sort of pull it out and see what's there. Sticky bits everywhere. And pull a little bit off just so we have a nice i like the torn edge i really do oh and i need to do that's what i might do tomorrow i need to do um junk june or january i haven't started any of the prompts yet so i need to do that because i've prepared the book well i'm carrying on from junk journal july that i didn't finish and i won't finish january either but that's okay the thing about it is if you don't finish it it could be just something that you're going to do carry on a little bit during the year I might do a bit more at another time and then I just need a little something something to go there where's that blue paper I could just have a little pop of blue I think so I could take this and just cut along the, the bottom like that and tear that off and then what I'm going to do is here I'm going to mark I'd like to mark it with a pencil if at all possible where I need to tear it there and then I'm going to slide it along here and mark that I need to tear it here about there I would like to tear it so let's see how I go hopefully I don't mess it up I might use this other I found my other wall I couldn't find it because I can line that up those two lines on there and then do it And then I'm going to go here. I wonder if that's straight. I do wonder. And there we go. There's my little piece came off. And is that going to work? Oh, yes, it is. There it is. Stick that down on there. Oh, I need to tear this bit here. I don't like that. Okay, so get some glue on there. it up there good oh, I'm liking this I didn't put any glue there that's no good right oh dear I think I got some glue on the window there I'll just clean that off okay okay this is going to have something else but I'm just going to sort of let it let it settle in my brain for a minute and now I need to put something here but I don't need to cover this all off because this is a lovely recycled envelope so I don't want to cover that all up I will need to do that but I'm not going to do it all today I'm going to do some of this afterwards so we'll just finish this bit here and then I think I'll I'll have, I think I'll have to have a rest because the headache is real it's not a pretend headache and I do have this lovely piece here, but is that too much the same? Hmm, I feel like it's too much the same. So, I know, I'm going to grab, which I love and I haven't used for a really long time, is one of these sort of backgroundy sort of pages. They were sitting on my garbage basket, so um, oh, that wallpaper's lovely. Um, they're my collage papers. I could use a bit of collage paper, actually. What about a bit of collage paper? I think I might use that. That's an actual collage that I did and I've scanned it. I don't think I put that in my shop. Hmm, I think I should put those in my shop. They're really nice and fun to use. They're very pretty. I like those. If I do say so myself. I scan them before I cut them up. And they're all... Um, 
you know, bits and pieces of my papers and from the public domain. So I'm all right there. Always be careful, like if you if you're wanting to scan something, like and you know sell it, then you don't want to be doing you know with someone else's kit or anything like that. So, um, or as something that's not in the public domain, like if you stuck a piece of um, book page from the fifties or something, it might not be in the public domain. I'm going to put that there. It's upside down. I'll put that there. But I may tear this down a bit by hand. So let's just take this piece off. Just going to do a little bit of very careful hand tearing. Now, I've said it a million times before, but we do have new people. If you keep your thumbs together near each other, you can control more your tearing. If you, if you go like this and then tear down like that it'll all go all over the place and you'll have to chuck it out it'll be a chucker chuckaroo we'll ozify the word right Okay, right, now this is the correct way because I've got script there so I don't want to put it on upside down. Hmm, I might go down and see, I think I might put this one in my shop, there's lots of really nice pages. Um, that were already collaged and scanned. And then I'm going to put, I'll put something there. Okay, so I think that is it for today. And then I will be back tomorrow or the next day and do some more. I absolutely love the pattern paper. Oh, look at that. How cool. I didn't even think about the window. Well, that was lucky. So we've got that. Um, so let's just recap what I did if I can remember. This was the envelope, the recycled envelope that I opened up and I glued, I glued many things to it, didn't I? <laughs> I glued this one and I, I don't know, I can't remember how I did it. I glued, oh I know, I glued to these, this one first. I glued this one to there, then I glued this one and then I glued that one, this one onto this one here and, and then they were glued and this one was glued to this one. Okay, does that make sense? I don't think I could recap it again. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. Anyway, I'll get my act together. Don't worry. I'll, tomorrow's a new day, so we'll see how we go tomorrow. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's the start of a fun project. I'm liking the look of it. As I said, I will probably put it into a cover. Um, should I Dare I show you what cover? I have, so a couple of years ago, pre-COVID, Oops, I said it pre, you know what, I did these, I did many of these covers. I did the a Nelly Workman course, I've told you all before, um, and I prepared so many covers, and I've got two left, and I've slowly been making journals in them, and I'm thinking I like the look of this one. Um, I can't show you how I made them because I did a course, and I don't believe in sharing other people's ideas when it's a paying, paying for course, if you know what I mean, so I hope you forgive me. I think the journal's going to go in there. Isn't it going to be pretty? I just, yeah, I think that's going to be lovely. So that's where it's going to go. I've, I've told you. And I'll probably do it. Um, I'll probably, I don't know whether I'll stitch it in or I'll decide that. I think I'll stitch it in because otherwise, otherwise I can snip little triangles out there and I can do it the Midori style with the elastic. So I can decide that whether I want it to be removable or not. Now, um, I do have a list of people, uh, a few people who are waiting for journals, so I'll have to offer it to the first person on my list first, um, and then I'll work down the list. So I won't be won't be going up for free, like uh, you know for free, like not for free. You know what I mean? On my Etsy with no, it'll probably go to someone 
who's on my list if they want it because some of them ask for botanical and stuff it might not be what they're looking for but anyway um so yes i will let you know if it's available for purchase um it may not be but i am going to make a, a, a couple so don't but they'll still have to be offered to the people on my list first okay i'm just waffling thank you so much for watching and putting up with my bloody blindness i hope well you know suzanne weeks um she has podcast on youtube it'd be lovely if she had like photographs and things but it's a podcast so it's just talking but it's very relaxing she's got a lovely english accent she in, she interviews really interesting amazing um textile artists and sewers and you know you just pick up some really lovely information and things as well um so yeah that i really enjoyed listening to her and that's where i got all this information about the embroidery the the ladies ladies magazine with all the embroidery patterns that jane austen used to to do as well so there you go all right so have a great day and thank you for watching and i will see you again bye